Hey, what's going on? It's John from Dowie Farm. I'm just here planting some shiso and uh, stuff like that. So I'm mostly just going to do shiso in this video, which is a uh, Asian um, plant, I guess, in the basil family. Um, it, uh, it's a pretty unique flavor. <laughs> kind of got a coriander, mint kind of thing going on. It's real popular in sushi. Um, things like that. The big leaves sell for quite a bit for sushi in a lot of a lot of places. If you want to uh, <clears throat> grow it for a full size uh, herb, it, it, it's a good profit margin. Uh, we haven't ventured into that yet, even though we should, because we can plant the uh, the leftover micros and get them to grow to full size. But uh, anyway, I'm going to plant eight flats of shiso here today and show you how we do our toppers. I call them uh, because they go on the top of our stack, and it's just uh, it's just what we call them. So. <laughs> Shiso is one of our toppers because it's an herb, and most of our long-term growth items, and which are almost always herbs, are going to go on the top of the stack because when you start to press them and and uh, and cover them and, and things like that with paper towels, they, they lose airflow and whatnot, and uh, they do mold. <laughs> Sometimes you get a poor germination. Sometimes you just when you pull that paper towel off, they're so fragile you'll lose uh, too much when you pull that paper towel off, like with a brassica or something or a sunflower. Or a peas, you won't. Uh, but with these these toppers, stuff stuff like cilantro, celery, shiso, amaranth. Um, I know that's not a herb, but I just call them all herbs. And uh, some other things that I can't think of. Time I got a list behind me here. Arugula, I do that way. I do that with mustards. Arugula, wasabi, uh, mizuna, and regular mustard. And um, what else? Basil. Did I say that? Maybe I don't know. Maybe sorrel, which I haven't had a lot of success with myself. Um, but I, it's the seed's so expensive. It's like you get a batch of sorrel seed for like $150, and then like if it doesn't work, you're not real likely to just go and jump right back in and try to give them new seeds. But uh, anyway, so I'm doing my shiso here. My first step is to get my trays out. Uh, I do label my trays, like I've mentioned before, um, on the ends. I write on them, and uh, with a grease pencil or a china marker or whatever we're calling it these days. Um, I've got a couple different colors. I've got a yellow one that I used to always use, and I've got a white one uh, that I started using when I bought new flats. So that way I kind of knew what I was, you know, just kind of differentiating some of them. Then I also have my day gun. It's a Daymark DM3 price tag gun, and it um, makes, makes labels. Ooh, where are you? Yeah, today's February 6th. All right, so I'm going to, and I just, I tag them there. Okay, so I'm going to tag these flats. And uh, on both sides, I like to do both sides because if I don't do both sides, they fall off on one side and then I don't know what's going on um, with them. So I just kind of bang through them like this and I just kind of get them on my finger and I stick them in. And uh, like I've mentioned before, I don't wash these flats every time. I know a lot of people freak out about that. Uh, but I do let them dry thoroughly after I harvest. I, I uh, knock the soil out into a bin, and then I let them, I, I kind of interlace them so they don't lay on top of each other, and I dry them all. So, yeah, anyway. So I got some stuff here on the bottom layer that I planted a couple days ago, and I only have room on my planting setup for uh, 16 spots here. So I usually will go a row of peas, and then a row of brassicas, and then a row of toppers. Uh, so there's not too much weight either. And, uh, what happens is I have so many toppers I have to plant, I end up uh, removing the ones that I've already planted while the other ones, are, while the brassicas and whatnot are germinating. And then um, I, I do some more. But I wait a day because I like to tape them so the lids don't get the domes, the humidity domes, the lids don't get knocked off. And what I end up doing is I, I wait a day for them to dry and I masking tape them and then I move them. Because if you don't masking tape them and you walk by them and you bump into them and you knock the tops off, you don't notice, it drives me insane. But anyway, that's my marker. Hang that up. All right. So I'm going to spread my flats out here. I'm going to go down to the, to the view of the table. I got my, see how I got my, my two trays here. I got, this one is a purple. These are actually brassicas because the peas were planted a day before they're done. This is a purple cabbage, uh, two purple cabbages now. So you don't have to stick to the hard and fast, oh my god, it's got to be peas that, or sun or radish on the bottom, and then you have to go a brassica. You can go two brassicas. You just want to think about your hardy ones. But uh, that's a different subject for a different day, I suppose. Um, Alright, so i got my, my eight flats spread out, and then I'm going to scoop my soil. Two scoops per, roughly. 
And these ones I go right to the top. Uh, the only thing I don't go right to the top on is peas because I hate when the peas roll off the side. So I go a little shallower on the peas. But uh, one thing I'm going to show you that's a difference with these is we, uh, we're going to go right to the top here. And uh, then I'm going to actually plant them and I'm going to hit it with some vermiculite. And I'll explain that in a minute. Anyway, I'm going to fast forward to this because this is boring, boring video. So here I go. Right, so now we're gonna spread them out. Now that's scooped. Maybe I won't fast forward. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> and I'm gonna spread them out, and I'm just gonna kind of level them off. And, and like after a while, I've had a lot of questions about why don't you use a thing to level these up? It's because I don't want the soil to fall down into the planting table. Um, but uh, I did used to have visions of that. <laughs> but and it makes sense. It's a good question. But I just don't have a setup for that right now because this is set up to drain water. If it gets a ton of soil in it, it doesn't work. So I just hit the corners first, usually. Corners first. And then I kind of spread the center. Make sure you get those corners. And now I try not to pat these down because we want oxygenated soil. That's why I mix with the perlite. Now the other stuff that grows short term obviously gets stacked. And that gets, you know, tamped down some. And we, we lose some of the oxygen flow. But the perlite makes that okay. With these toppers, I want as much air in the soil as possible because they're going to grow for so long I just need oxygen uh, oxygenation of the soil I think that's the word um, and it really just helps so I don't ever pat these down you know anyway now I probably should go to uh, fast forward let's do that because this is way more All right, cool. We're done. I got the brown thumb, man. No. So uh, here we go. Now I've got all my soil spread out. <laughs> now I've got all my soil spread out. I'm gonna spray the crap out of them. I'm gonna wet these pretty good. So uh, I'm not afraid to get them too wet because I've added 50% perlite and uh, the 50% perlite thing really makes it so you, you can't really put too much water. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I've definitely had too much water in them before, <laughs> but you're gonna spray these pretty good as you're gonna see. Um, I'm gonna saturate them. They're saturated, and then there's way over saturated, obviously. Like, so you should be able to spray these, I guess to give you an idea, and then pick them up, and the water shouldn't just run out of them. But it should be really close. So if the water is running out of them like crazy, through the holes on the bottom, then that's probably too much. Um, and I've done that before by accident. Usually what I end up doing is just kind of propping them up so they drain, and that works. But I have over saturated things before, like my cilantro. Um, it's a weird dance with the cilantro, <laughs> but anyway, here we go. I'm gonna spray these. I got my sprayer, my Melnor sprayer, and I got it set to shower. Okay, here we go. And yeah, my 
fan. I can turn this fan on. The fan is blowing water at the camera. That's probably not a good thing. So here we go. I'm just going to spray them good. And usually, sometimes, I'll, a lot of times, I'll go down and I'll hit them with a little top spray so that, uh, cause it, if you don't, all the perlite kind of settles to the top. This is really light. So I kind of like get a glue spray while you're here. Right? Like just nail it to get it wet. And then it isn't going to, it isn't going to like move all that perlite to the top. So and then once I've done them all, I'll come back to the sun and then I'll douse them. And then if you feel them, they're pretty significantly heavy. They're heavier than you would want them to be if they were growing, you know. Um, but like what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to accomplish here is a couple different things. I'm trying not to let these dry out while they're germinating because that's going to be an issue with these shiso seeds, at least it has been in the past. And some of these long-term growth items, they, you know, these things are going to be covered under humidity dome, and which is, they're not stacked, so they're just going to have these little, these, these two-inch domes on them with air holes and they can dry out and then you're going to lose the crop which sucks so you don't want to lose the crop especially with shiso seed being 80 something 90 dollars a pound and most of these herb seeds are a higher dollar seed so if you like if you fail now you've lost a lot of money and that's not even your realized costs uh, or uh, your unrealized gains of if you could have sold it. so like i'll pull um on a good flat of shiso, three to three and a half ounces, you know, out of a, uh, you know, three to three and a half ounces of uh, shiso out of a flat, and I sell for $10 an ounce. So we're looking at, you know, like a pretty good profit margin on the shiso. Sorta, of, like it depends on what I look at. I guess it sits on the shelf for 30 something days too, so it's tough, but <laughs> you know, it's 80 something dollars an ounce for, or a pound for seeds. I only plant 0.3 ounces per flat. I get $10 an ounce for a reason, because it needs to get $10 an ounce, because it sits on the shelf for 30 days, at least. And it's expensive seed. And sometimes it doesn't work out. <laughs> so you gotta make up for your loss. Uh, but like, this is your best bet right here. So um, I'm gonna spray it, and now I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna start planting. Actually, come with me, because I'm gonna waste seeds. So I've got my, maybe I don't. Let me go find my scale. Hey, yeah, it's over here. got my nice scale. It's important to have a good scale, okay, because you're going to be doing a lot of weighing of stuff, micros and seeds, and you want something good. And a lot of people use grams, and as I've discussed before, I absolutely despise grams. Sorry, folks, grams suck. <laughs> so I'm going to use ounces. So whatever, because this is America. <laughs> I work for a restaurant chain. I used to have to do inventory every single week. And they switched between grams and ounces all the time. And it drove me insane. So I will never use grams again. Uh, here we go. I'm going to turn my scale on. I'm going to zero it out. Okay. Zero. Now oh, you turn it on at zero. But you put your stuff on it first. And then I'm going to find my shiso seed. Now. Okay. I know I was talking about $88 a pound. Or, yeah. Of course, they were out of the $88 pound seed, so I have this backup uh, shiso. And uh, I'm going 0 0.4, I think, on this one, because it, it's a bigger seed. So the smaller the seed, the higher, or the, the lower the weight's gonna be that you wanna plant. So pretend this is 0 0.3, <laughs> all right? And pretend these seeds are smaller. Sorry for the inaccuracies, but 7.8 get real close and then you stop. So you gotta go slow or it goes over. And I'll tell you what, grams are better for accuracy, but don't let, what is it? Don't let perfect be the enemy of good or whatever, or good enough is perfect. That's a Joel Salton quote for you. Anyway, so I got those. And I'm gonna put those aside. So much stuff in the way, because I've been a very, very busy person. And I'm gonna put these ones on and of course, Back in this in the 1920s when they made these, they made them in different sizes. So I have to re-zone or re uh, re-zero. And I'm gonna go point four. One, two, three, four. And then so like with the other shiso seeds, they're much smaller. This is Vietnamese shiso. And I guess so I use the red perilla usually. 
um, but they were out, and I had to get something down because I have a restaurant with it on the menu. Up, I screwed up. I went 0.5 on that one, so we're going to see what happens. Now, same idea here because these were a little cheaper. These were 50 or 60 a pound, but they're bigger, so you're going to use more per per flat. So you're not really saving any money there. Um, but they do seem to be growing a little faster, and I guess they're going to be a, a red leaf on the top or the bottom, and green, red on one side, green on the other. All right. Um, they're Geoc Sam IP. Some I don't know what any of those words mean, but uh, and I'm sure I pronounced them all wrong. But also known as Vietnamese Perilla, Perilla Shiso beef steak, steak something, something like that. That's all the words. So if you're like searching, I get these seeds from Kitazawa, Hojiso Kitazawa. Um, I really like them. They're a really good company. Hold on, I know you're looking at nothing, I'm sorry. Here we go, here we go, all right, all right cool. So, I'm gonna spread seeds, corners first, light layer. You want them to be spread out really well, not bunched together, because some of these more delicate seeds, when they're bunched together, if you get one seed that doesn't germinate, and then that stupid thing starts to rot on top of your soil, for 30 days, right, it starts to go bad. And then we're just gonna get a nice even layer. And then I get a little extra left. And then so I go around the, around the edges. I do the end, sides, center. We'll come up with a, a thing for that. Ends, sides, center, sides. I go real light on the ends of the sides uh, at first. And then I fill the center with like two little things here. And then I have that much left, and I just kind of do this. I hope you can see. I know you probably can't see, but there we go. All right. Here we go. Let's try to see if I can get an over-the-shoulder deal here. Or maybe I can get a better view. And, and, ooh, yeah, baby. Sides and sides center. You get a nice, even distribution. Now, just like spreading out soil, just like spraying soil, just like spreading seed, you're going to get a feel for this stuff, and after a while, you're just going to be a pro. And in the beginning, you're like, oh my god, I don't do this, and you freak out. I just like, you know, I used to be that way, and I used to be like, oh my god, I got them way too close together, and I'd freak out in my overwatering. After, you know, trial and error and some practice, you just get used to this, and you can bang stuff out fast. I've planted about 180 flats this week. We got Valentine's Day coming up, so I've been going hard on planting. And, uh, you know, so I basically, you know, that's all I'm doing. Maybe we get a close-up. You can get some seed density. See the seed density? You can kind of see it. Those are the seeds. That's the white stuff's the perlite. The tan stuff's the seeds. That's a good view. I like it. I'm excited. All right. Cool. Anyway, that's how you see it. I'm going to go back so you have to watch me do eight flats. And I'm going to cover the perlite part. I'm sorry, the vermiculite part. So, get my nail pack. Oh, I got my big thing. I'm vermiculite. Now my vermiculite big bag, like the same size as the perlite bag, which is a four cubic foot bag, cost me about double what the vermiculite costs. It's not a cheap seed. Um, oh, sorry, I missed a step. So, so I, I go a little, I go very sparingly on vermiculite. Also, you don't want all that water to be staying there. So, right, so what I do now is I switch to mist with the with these toppers, okay? And I go over and I mist them. Now with the brassica, I stay on shower and a pea and a um, sunflowers and radish and all that. I stay in shower, but on these toppers I just switch over to, to mist so I don't blast these. I just got great seed distribution, and that's very important for long-term items. I don't want to blast them all over the place with the water, so I hit it with a mist, all right? So that's, I'll come back to the rest of these, all right? Now I'm going to take my vermiculite, which absorbs water, unlike perlite, which creates air pockets, and I'm going to hit it with a okay layer. Now when I get to the bottom of this package or scoop it's gonna be like dust I still just use it the same 
and it seems to not be an issue. So here's what's going on, right? I've got expansive seeds. I've got time into this. I've got 80-ish cents worth of soil per flat invested into this. I've got good money invested into these seeds, and I've got $30 per flat on 30 days of growth at, at stake. So I don't want this to go on me, right? And what I found is without this vermiculite, in a, in a room where you're running 30% humidity and you're running dehumidifiers all the time, it sucks the, the moisture right out of the seeds in the top of the soil, and it dries, and I'll get weird, depending on air currents, and where this, excuse me, and where this is, I'll get weird uh, germination sometimes, like maybe if there's more airflow towards the back, because of where it, it gets set down, um, the back will dry without the vermiculite. Maybe, you know, sometimes like just parts of this dry. Sometimes it all dries out. I mean, it's awful, right? So I got a nice weight, nice heft to it. It's pretty wet. See how there's no water dripping out the bottom, but it's nice and heavy. Then I sprayed them and got soil contact with my mist. And that's why I do that, by the way, to get the seeds wet and then get soil contact. <laughs> now I've got my vermiculite down and I'm going to spray it pretty generously with my mist so I don't blast those seeds around. Um, and the vermiculite is going to suck up this water and it's basically going to time release it for me, right? Like as the soil needs water, it's going to let it take it out. And as your seeds need water, it's going to, it's going to like create a microclimate of humidity that's right for these seeds. Now I don't cover the whole flat as you can see with, uh, with vermiculite because that would be insane. I, I just put enough in there to create a, a, a humid-ish damp microclimate for my shiso seeds, right? And uh, voila, here we go. No, so we're good, right? So see my density on perlite to shiso to vermiculite. And it's I would say it's about even um, when you look at it on the top. Now, like I said, I'm 50% perlite, or yeah, sorry, I didn't screw these words up, man. I'm 50% perlite on, uh, there we go. Ooh, yeah, I always forget to look over there at you guys. I'm always looking at myself. So I'm a good looking dude. No, but anyway, so um a 50% perlite in that soil. So I have 50% soil, 50% perlite, good quality organic soil, like I've talked about. And um I am a spattering of vermiculite on the top. Uh let's come over here and look at some of my shiso that's growing now. This is almost ready to harvest. And here we are. We're looking okay. See, this is the old seed. It turns kind of red. I had a mold spot on this one, which wicked sucks, man, because I'm going to lose like, I don't know, five to eight bucks probably because of that little moldy spot. Now, this is my old setup on lights. Sorry to blast the camera. This one doesn't have any mold spots. So hopefully you can see it. Yeah. See, I got the front's turning red and it's a little taller and the back's not. And uh, when the, where the Shiso gets, hope you can see that well. And now I have some over here that didn't do well. See, I have some over here that just crapped out on me. And it happens, man. I, we can't be perfect all the time. Shit's gonna happen. And this was a mold issue. And uh, I think I had a soil problem for a little while. I think I got a bad batch from my guy. It's tough for them in the winter. Um, I should be buying this by the pallet, but I don't have any place to store it. So in the winter, it's hard for the guy at this feed store because everything's frozen in his warehouse. He doesn't know what was wet and what wasn't sometimes. You know what I mean? So it could have been a soil issue. Could be soil from right from the distributor. But I also have the this shiso over here going. This is the same stuff that I uh, was just planting. I planted this stuff on January 30th, and we're coming along. And if you can see growth, see enough? Yeah. Cool? Yeah. So it's coming along nice. Uh, this Vietnamese shiso grows, seems to grow a little faster than the, um, the perilla. And I, I labeled on my, because I wanted to know what's what. I, laid, I wrote new on my tag. <laughs> so it seems to be growing a little faster than the uh, old, the regular Perilla. So I actually just kind of hope this chef likes it <laughs> so I can roll with that. Because it'd be nice to crank this stuff out in 21 days maybe. Um, that stuff that was on the shelf that we just looked at was, uh, let me look at the date, January 12th. So that sucks. Like January 12th, it's already February 6th. Like, six more days before I, that's going to be really ready. Um, what you're going to see in the next six days is that w will go all red, all right? And uh, it'll get a real nice, deep maroon red, the red perilla will. We're going to see what happens with this stuff. Uh, I'll post some update videos <laughs> and see where it goes. Anyway, we're at 25 minutes on Shiso. <laughs> so, but uh, just to, to cap it off, it's with the, with the vermiculite. 
Um, I do the same thing. Let's look over here with most of these toppers. Um, I do the same thing with my, not the arugula. I don't bother with that because that's a, a bigger seed that holds water. I do it with shiso. I don't do it with basil because that's mucilaginous and it holds its own water. So that's cool. Cilantro, I don't do it because I soak them. But celery, sorrel, um, I did it with amaranth. I have terrible luck with amaranth because I think I just don't get warm enough in here. Um, fennel and carrots, though, I absolutely do it. And that's where I've gotten my success with the shiso, the celery, the fennel, and the carrots. Um, I've gotten much better germination and much better yield because of this vermiculite top layer. So I think that's an important step to this stuff. Don't be afraid to play around with vermiculite. I've been throwing it underneath my peas lately and I've been getting better germination on my peas. So maybe I'm having problems with the peas drying out around the edges. It also depends on the climate in your grow room, your humidity levels, what time of the year it is, where you're growing. Like you're going to have to adjust to your grow room situation. It's important to have gauges around to know what's going on and uh, you're just going to observe this stuff and you'll uh, you'll be fine always observe always check your stuff every day ish as much as possible <laughs> i know that's a lot of work but it's what i do i'm always just in tune with it man and if you have somebody else working with you you can trust that's awesome good more power to you anyway john from dolly farm thanks for watching thanks for taking the class bye-bye